the Murdoch family back in the news today, now revolving around uh, the son of Alec Murdoch. Of course, you were watching just last month the uh, really uh, the trial that uh, has captivated so much of us, uh, including, uh, you know, with Alec Murdoch getting uh, life in prison there for his role in killing his wife, Maggie, and his son, his younger son, Paul. Well, now Buster Murdoch is in the news uh, again as well. He is denying involvement, quote, unequivocally in the death of his purported former high school classmate, Stephen Smith. Uh, and so this is yet another angle in all of the Murdoch drama, so much so uh, that Stephen Smith's family, including his mother, uh, exhuming his body to find out more about his very peculiar uh, and bizarre demise there. But this was back in 2015. Buster Murdoch denying involvement in Stephen Smith's killing. I want to put up a statement uh, that Buster Murdoch put out today via his attorney, Dick Hartpootlian. You'll remember Hartpootlian represented his father during the trial. I'm going to read it. He says, I've tried my best to ignore the vicious rumors about my involvement in Stephen Smith's tragic death that continue to be published in the media as I grieve over the brutal murders of my mother and brother. I love them so much and miss them terribly. I haven't spoken up until now because I want to live in private while I cope with their deaths and my father's incarceration. Before, during, and since my father's trial, I've been targeted and harassed by the media and followers of this story. This has gone on far too long. These baseless rumors of my involvement with Stephen and his death are false. I unequivocally deny any involvement in his death, and my heart goes out to Stephen's family. I'm requesting that the media immediately stop publishing these defamatory comments and rumors about me. Uh, and so attorneys for the family of Stephen Smith. Uh, they held a virtual meeting today, taking questions from reporters. Like I said, his body was exhumed over the weekend to find out more about what led to his killing. But Buster Murdoch, with this statement, denying, quote, unequivocally, that he had anything to do with Stephen Smith's tragic death back in 2015. Let's, uh, Watch if we can hear that uh, at least some of that uh, Zoom meeting, that virtual meeting that took place today with members of the legal team of Stephen Smith's mother taking questions from reporters uh, about where do they go from here? Let's listen. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank you for joining us today. We are here to discuss developments surrounding the tragic death of Stephen Smith. As you are now aware, Bland Richter Law Firm has been retained by Sandy Smith, Stephen's mother to represent her in this matter. We will introduce them shortly along with award-winning journalist, Mandy Matney. We believe that it's essential for the public to be aware of the facts surrounding Stephen's death and for there to be a thorough and impartial investigation into the circumstances that led to this tragedy. We wanna thank the incredible people who donated to the GoFundMe. As of this morning, the fund has raised over $65,000. We are here today because of your generosity and commitment to justice for Stephen, we wanna assure you that every dollar of this fund is going to the investigation, expert fees and exhumation costs. Investigators are being hired to start over as if they just arrived on the scene. We are not here today to indulge in rumors and speculation. We are committed to working with authorities to ensure that justice is served and that those who are responsible are held accountable. We understand that there are many questions surrounding this case and we wanna provide some answers and clarity in the weeks ahead. We wanna thank you for your attention this morning. Let me let a few more people in. All right. Thank you for your patience. Mm -mm. A lot of people on this morning. No. A few people are still coming in. Appreciate you guys.
I want to introduce and thank Stephen's mother, Sandy Smith. Sandy, thank you for being here and joining us today. Sandy's grace and courage throughout this process shines through, and I hope that everyone here is committed to finding the truth and the peace that she deserves. I also would like to introduce Eric Bland and Ronnie Richter, the founders of Bland Richter Law Firm. Eric is also the co-host of Cup of Justice, along with Mandy Matney, an award-winning journalist who has been an integral part of sharing Stephen's story through her podcast, The Murdaugh Murders and Cup of Justice. Mandy and her partner, Liz Farrell, were the first to write about Stephen's story and have continually put pressure on the fact that his death needs to be reinvestigated. They are a foundational reason that we are here today and have been incredible advocates for Sandy and Stephen Smith. Thank you all so much. Mandy's also here with us to answer any questions. With that being said, I want to give the floor to Ronnie, then Mandy, then Eric, and we will be taking questions at the end. So please keep your mics down. You can ask questions in the chat. I'll be fielding those. And I just want to thank you all for being here and let's get started. Ronnie, floor is yours. Yeah, good morning. This is Ronnie Richter, partner of the Bland Richter Law Firm. Uh, my partner, Eric Bland, and I are honored today to announce our representation of Sandy Smith as it relates to a renewed investigation into the death of her son, Stephen Smith. On July 8th, 2015, at approximately 4 a.m., Stephen Smith's body was found in the middle of Sandy Run Road in Hampton County. Uh, there were no skid marks around his body. There, were no, there was no vehicular debris found. Uh, his loosely tied shoes were still on his feet. His motor vehicle uh, was about three miles away on Bamberg Road uh, with the gas cap removed. And while it would appear that his car broke down and he had walked for help, he never called from, for help from the cell phone that was found on his body. Um, Sandy Smith has never accepted the conclusion of the cursory investigation that followed his death that, that concluded that his death was a, a result of a hit and run. And uh, it is our job today, it is our honor today to launch a new investigation into this death in the hopes of finding real answers to the questions that still persist surrounding Stephen's death. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ronnie. Eric, we're going to pass the baton to you. Oh, your mic's off. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending this uh, press conference and the introduction of Blaine Richter into this investigation. <clears throat> I've been a lawyer for 35 years, and many of our cases come to us after other people have uh, represented clients, and so this is nothing different than what we've had many times in our career. And what we're going to do is start over. We're going to hire experts who are going to come into this case with a fresh set of eyes, with an open mind, without any preconceived conclusions, being objective and wherever the facts go that's where the investigation will go. We've been hired and we're gonna give our time to petition the court to get permission to exhume the body of Stephen. We're gonna to have to show good cause to the court why they should do it because in our state, like in every other state, people who have died have rights. They don't end when their heartbeat stops. And Stephen has a right not to have his grave disturbed as do other people who are buried. And so we're gonna to have to uh, petition the court, show facts that would indicate that uh, a fresh set of eyes, a new autopsy may yield a different conclusion that Stephen was not killed on Sandy Run Road in Bamberg County, that maybe he was killed somewhere else. And if we get that permission, Ronnie and I are going to supervise and oversee the exhumation process, making sure it's respectfully done. You have to have uh, a funeral director there. There, there has to be uh, protocols put in place to make sure that the, the remains are not uh, disturbed any more than they should be, and do it in a respectful fashion. And hire investigators who are going to go back and do a Stephen Smith 2.0. This is not a Alex Murdoch 2.0 or any Murdoch 2.0. This is a Stephen Smith 2.0. It's all about Stephen. And what we intend to do is look at his life, you know, look at the life 90 days before July 8th, 2015. Look at who he was um, associating with, who were his friends, what kind of communications did he have, what were his plans, 
We knew that he was a nursing student and obviously wanted to become a doctor. Um, we think a lot of the pre-death communications can be relevant. We also think that post-death communications on different people could yield some information. One of the things um, that we can do is start a civil suit um, to look at the cause of death, which would give us subpoena power as well as uh, discovery rights under the South Carolina Rules of Civil Procedure. But all those are decisions that are going to be made down the road. The first decision it has to be made by a judge, and hopefully a judge will see that we have good cause to open Stephen's death. We, we think that he did not die um, on that road that mm -hmm. fateful night. We think that there was um, other reasons and other causes that caused his death. Our job is not to find out who did it. That's not what we do. We're not law enforcement. We're not doing a criminal case. We're helping in an investigation. And what we're really trying to do is give a mother answers. Parents should never have to witness children dying before them. And Sandy has witnessed that. And for eight years, all she has is questions. And you know, we're very grateful for law enforcement for what they've done so far to date on this case. We know that in September 2021, they opened the investigation. Sorry, I'm jittery. I had my knee replaced, so I'm trying to get comfortable. But in September 2021, they opened uh, an investigation in Stephen's mm -hmm. death, and we have maintained that SLED should have been and is the proper investigative agency for Stephen's death. And so we intend to uh, share anything that we may find in our own investigation with law enforcement. There's no uh, secret sauce here. There's no intent on us trying to trump anybody. It's our goal that we can all work jointly together. Okay, so you've been listening now to this uh, virtual meeting that took place today, uh, top of the hour here, three o'clock uh, on the West Coast of these attorneys who are now representing uh, Stephen Smith's mother, uh, they want a judge to open a case into his untimely death back in 2015. Uh, they say there are still so many questions uh, surrounding what exactly happened. I just read you the statement put out by Buster Murdoch's attorney, Buster Murdoch, saying he unequivocally denies any involvement in what happened uh, to Stephen Smith. Uh, Fox News' Jonathan Seri reports uh, from Atlanta on this new development in the Murdoch saga. Let's listen. Buster Murdoch, the only surviving son of double murder convict Alec Murdoch, is pushing back against rumors surrounding his involvement in a reopened cold case involving a former high school classmate. In 2015, Stephen Smith was found dead near Murdaugh's family estate in South Carolina. Authorities initially determined the 19-year-old was the victim of a hit-and-run accident, but reopened the investigation six years later after Buster's mother, Maggie, and brother, Paul, were fatally shot. His father, Alec, was recently convicted of their murders and sentenced to life in prison. But in a Netflix documentary that aired simultaneously to the trial, Buster's name was called into question as some speculated he had been somehow involved in Smith's death. There are facts that don't add up and bodies tied to this family. There's been the long uh, rumored involvement somehow of a Murdoch, whether it's him or somebody else in the family that has knowledge, at least, of the death of Stephen Smith. This month, Smith's family opened a GoFundMe page announcing plans to raise money to exhume the body and perform an independent autopsy. On the fundraising site, Stephen's mother, Sandy, writes, thank you for not allowing Stephen's story to be swept under a rug. We will pursue the exhumation immediately and provide updates along the way. Skeptics of the initial hit and run theory say no debris from a vehicle impact was found at the scene. They believe the victim's head injury was caused by something other than a moving car or truck. In Atlanta, Jonathan Seri, Fox News. Jonathan, thanks so much. Obviously, that's a story we're going to have to stay on top of. We'll have